Hello, my friends. So today we are going to talk about a basic tool that that you can use in Photoshop to simplify and make it just that much easier for you guys to be able to smooth skin um, with one simple tool, not a lot of settings, super, super quick. Uh, um, the image that's attached right here was a, a photo shoot that I did about two weeks ago uh, with a creative with a creative team that I work with out here in Las Vegas. And uh, this is our model right here, Micah. Um, so today we're going to just show just using the the healing brush tool in Photoshop, how you can go from um, this to this uh, in just roughly about five minutes. So here's, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So uh, my mouse cursor is gonna kinda highlight some of the areas that we're gonna fix. All these blemish blemishes and uh, spots and discolorations in skin and some freckles and um, just all this stuff, man. Uh, just in about five minutes, you can go from that to just this. Um, so we just we smoothed out a lot of that. Um, I didn't go through and, and spend quite as much time as I normally would if I was only using this tool uh, to just fix absolutely everything. But in about five minutes is how far we can get. So let's uh, hop over to Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. Photoshop CC 2017. Uh, the healing brush tool, which is the tool that we're going to use today, is in pretty much every single version of Photoshop. If you have even remotely late version of like CS5, CS4 and higher, this tool will be in there. Uh, granted, how to get to this tool may be a little bit different based on the Photoshop version that you have, but uh, the tool that we're gonna be using today is the Healing Brush tool. Uh, just like the video that I posted previously on our ch channel regarding how to actually use the Spot Healing Brush tool, which uh, basically just does everything in, in kind of one swing, um, today we are going to be using the Wacom tablet as as before. So I am using Wacom or Wacom tablet. Um, I do have some shortcut keys that are on the tablet that are uh, customized right now. One of which is going to be the the undo button. Uh, the other of which is actually going to function as the alt key, um, the alt and or option key if you're using Mac. Uh, I am using Mac, so I, I use the option key. So the option key is going to allow us to select the area that we want. Um, to sample from and then we're going to just paint over that with the area that we're trying to get rid of so uh, those keys are already set up on the wacom tablet um i will be doing a video on how to set that up but for the time being just know it's set up and let's hop into photoshop so i dance around here um okay so what we're going to do just like before we are going to right, let me ungroup that uh we are going to make a new layer so layer on normal um 100 opacity um, and fill 100% just a standard layer. So we're gonna go over here into our our brush tools, our, our spot patch and content aware, and we're gonna select the healing brush tool. Oh, that was actually spot here. So healing brush tool, that's fine. Um, healing brush tool. Uh, up here as far as settings, we're gonna leave it on normal as opposed to replace. Um, if you put it into the replace function, it kind of functions the exact same, same way or similar, uh, not exactly the same way as the clone brush. Um, so we're gonna leave it on normal so that it can it can do some more blending and it's not gonna like literally just place and and like stamp the exact um, exact area that we're sampling from. If you leave it on normal, long story short, it's gonna it's gonna blend a little better. Um, so just leave it on normal. You're welcome to put it on replace if you want it to actually be more like the clone stamp, which we'll talk about in a future video. But long story short, we're just gonna leave it on normal. Um, the source is gonna be sampled as, as opposed to uh, pattern. And then the, we're gonna select right here. It's uh, it's uh, targeting uh, algorithm, and make sure that it's it's sampling from the current layer and below. So boom, which allows us to basically sample on this new layer right here. And uh, actually, it pulls from this layer right here, and then we can just put place it on a new layer so we can work non-destructively. So let's uh, let's zoom in, and we're gonna start to get started here. And uh, it's 10:35 p.m. right now. We're gonna literally just spend five minutes. It's just five minutes um, and just go super hand, man. So what you have to do when it comes to utilizing the healing brush tool, you, you have to select a place, um, a, um, a skin texture, tone and color. Uh, it actually samples from all of those things, but you have to select an area of, of the photo that you want it to pull the sample from. Uh, my computer is going to get a little bit laggy doing this functionality, so just bear with me. Um, but that's what you do with the alt and or option key. That key is already shortcut on my Wacom tablet. That's what I'm pressing right now when it's changing the cursor 
on the uh, on the actual uh, display that you guys can see it's changing it from the actual brush um, where you can adjust the size and it shows you the opacity of a round circle of where it's actually going to brush over uh, changes that to an actual a sample a sample selection uh, indicator uh, wherever you tap from here is where it's actually going to sample and then when you use the brush it actually samples from there and it pulls texture tone and color information from exactly where you sampled based on how big the brush um, actually is um, and then it just replaces that over and then it's it uses a predefined algorithm to determine the feathering and it tries its best based on Photoshop and it's a, it's mathematics or whatever to um, match the actual sample to the best of the ability to where you're actually brushing. That's basically what this tool is doing. Um, and, and that's what you really have to do. So in general, uh, best practices, uh, it's 1037. I haven't really started yet. I'm just kind of giving you guys some, some overview and, and stuff like that. So you understand what this tool is doing. Um, Let's get started right now. Let's actually put five minutes and I'll just keep on talking over this stuff because you have a basic idea of what you guys are going to see me doing here. So, um, as, as, far, as far as trip tricks though, and, um, best uses and best practices when it comes to the, uh, the healing brush tool as opposed to the spot healing brush tool. Um, typically you want the, uh, you want the, the brush size to be slightly bigger than the blemish you're removing. And then what you're going to do is use the alt or option key to select slightly outside of the blemish, um, in an area of skin that you, you prefer to actually be there to, uh, basically brush over or sample over. Um, and it'll, it'll, it'll do its best to, um, replace the texture tone and color from where you actually sample. So basically you're telling Photoshop, Hey, uh, this is where I'm sampling. Could you please put this skin or texture or whatever it may be, if it's a garment or you're actually working on someone's skin, um, and you're working on blemish removal and, and skin smoothing. Um, you're just telling Photoshop, Hey, like I'm sampling over here. Can you like, like do some math and like put this like in this area? So it looks good too. Um, that's basically what you're telling Photoshop. Uh, wherever you sample is where Photoshop is going to pull its, 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 uh, information from as far as texture, tone and color. And then this is going to just basically rub over wherever you're actually brushing. And that's literally all I'm doing. Uh, my computer is going to be very, very laggy because I am recording a video while I'm talking and, and doing some Photoshop intensive work. Um, yes. So it's going to be a little laggy. It's going to just take a little bit of time for us to kind of catch up and understand, but that's literally what I'm doing here. I'm not doing anything revolutionary. I'm just sampling slightly outside of where I wanted to sample from, um, or sorry, it's, I'm, I'm sampling right out of where I want the blemish um, to be removed or that has an area of better skin. Sometimes it's not always right outside the blemish, but um, I'm sampling in an area of, of good skin and I'm just basically just brushing over the area that has bad skin. Um, now you do get kind of funky results from time to time with this, with this tool. So uh, this is part of the reason why I personally don't use it that well. It's just really time consuming. Um, if you're really picky about it, you can get you can get really industry leading and professional uh, photo retouching and skin smoothing results. And quite honestly, this is how some of the, the, the high end beauty retouchers and um, commercial retouchers that that work for big clients, they actually retouch. Um, they zoom in a lot further than I'm zooming in right now. But uh, ultimately, this is kind of how they end up doing it um, there. It's it's usually a mixture of this in, in the clone brush. Um, Sometimes it is just this tool. Sometimes it's specifically just the clone brush. They, everyone has a difference on, on the, their opinion with that. But nonetheless, that's uh, this is basically the basic premise of how you actually use this tool. Um, and it's it's now been three minutes. We're uh, a little bit going a little bit slower. There's quite a lot of things to remove here as far as blemishes and uneven tones. And um, she does have freckles when I'm which I'm just smoothing out the freckles so you guys can see the impact of how far we can get in about five minutes. Uh, biggest tips when it comes to using this this tool outside of the brush size is making sure that uh, when you run up edges that you either zoom in or you're gonna have to use another tool because this tool is infamously bad when it comes to edges I mean it's just it's really not that great uh, the clone brush would be a better alternative the patch tool would be a better alternative when it comes to edges um, there's a couple other techniques that you can do as well as far as uh, selecting and um, yeah, I mean, you can just use those selection tools and you can get a little bit closer there as well. Um, but this tool is not really the greatest when it comes to uh, it, when it comes to edges, as are most of the tools in, in this uh, healing brush uh, palette over here. 
Um, so 41, we got about two more minutes. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you're if you're getting up to edges, you may want to, you're welcome to experiment and, and see if you can finagle a way to have it work for the specific edge that you're trying to, to uh, edit on. But uh, overall, it's usually not very good at edges. So you're gonna have to use alternate uh, alternate techniques to uh, tackle a blemish on an edge. It's just kind of the truth. Um, there's just, there's better techniques to get that stuff taken care of. Uh, okay, 42, we're getting close. We'll do one more minute here. I don't want, I don't want to bore you guys with how tedious this, this particular tool is and just, yeah, you just got to get in there, man. Um, and then all I'm doing is just, just pressing the alt and then brushing over, pressing alt, brushing over. Um, I'm not really in a position where I need to adjust the brush sides that much. Um, just because most of these blemishes are roughly the same size, so I don't need to really worry too much. Uh, one thing to note though, if you go over areas multiple, multiple times, it's going to start to get kind of blotchy and it's also going to start to lose a lot of texture. Um, I will do a future video on how to actually fix that, but if you go over an, an area more than, let's say, two or three times, it's going to start to lose a lot of texture and detail um, and it's going to get really, really blurry. There are definitely techniques to fix that, but uh, for the time being, just know that's going to happen. So don't go over don't go over an area more than, let's say, twice, um, maybe three times if you're like really trying to fix something specific. Okay, so it's already 43. And let's kind of zoom out and see where we got here. I'm zooming a little bit, so it's a little bit too far. And centralize that, and we'll just go on and off. Okay, so let me turn it all the way off, and turn it all the way back on, and boom, five minutes. There you go, guys, five minutes. Now, obviously, I wanted to get the whole face done, uh, but in five minutes with this tool, it just takes too long, and I'm recording a video, so it's it's honestly just gonna just bore you guys to death. Uh, we don't need to we don't need to go in the, in the weeds here. Just having me do the whole face. I mean, honestly, it's the same exact technique. Um, one of the things I, I will kind of uh, definitely highlight for you guys, though, um, you really only need to zoom in very, very close to, to at least the level that I was at right there. I don't know exactly what the percentage of zoom was. I'm not in the zoom tool to know what that is, but uh, you do need to zoom in pretty close to blemishes. You don't need to necessarily go to one to one or like maximum 100 100% zoom or whatever it is, um, but you do need to get as close to the blemish as possible so that when you're selecting the area that you want it to fix, that um, it's it's clear and it's a good it's a good sample uh, selection. Um, as, as you zoom further and further out, you may not be able to see some of that information. And then also you're going to make your brush size a lot bigger, which is also going to get other blemishes. So, uh, just keep that in mind. You definitely zoom in a little bit closer and get a little bit tighter up on, on the blemishes and get a little bit tighter up on the skin so that you can get the best sample, um, selection. Um, now the biggest thing on that front as well is, uh, when it comes to using this technique just to, just to fix skin in general. Um, you really need to pay the most amount of attention and zoom the most amount in when it comes to the face because the texture as you go through different areas of the face is actually very different. Um, some people have very fine texture here and then it gets very loose and then it's fine right here and it's loose right here. Um, everyone has very different te texture on their skin and, and, and the face is where the most amount of texture and the variety of texture exists. Um, as you get further and further away from the skin, so you start getting down to the neck and the chest and the legs and the arms, um, as you get to those areas, you don't need to be as, as picky and you don't have to zoom in as much. You can use a much bigger brush setting. Like when I'm, when I'm doing most of the, the blemishes, I'd be at a, let's say 20 pixel. Um, yeah, roughly about a 20, somewhere between 10, 10 to 10 to 30, 10 to 40 pixel wide, uh, brush. Um, by the way, these are the brush settings and literally default brush. Uh, you're welcome to change the hardness if you want it to blend. Um, better or you, you want the, the, the actual surrounding um, outer edges of the brush to be softer um, that's going to be very based on hardness I don't normally change that personally uh, again I don't really use this tool that much I'm just kind of showing you guys uh, but that's that's that that would be how you would make the brush softer than making the sample selection more smooth um, that's what that would do but back on the brush size that I was talking about um, so with with that when i'm working on the face i'm only doing usually five somewhere between five to 30 pixels maybe 40 pixels when i get out to the rest of the outer body i mean it could be 50 to 100 pixels it's a way big it's a much larger brush like it, as we get down here to the arms um there's just not as much texture the, the variety of texture is just not as much 
um, it's a lot more consistent in, in one terms of texture or one uh, uh, type of grain and, and a type of uh, texture. Um, so you don't have to worry about it as much, but you do have to be a little bit more cognizant of what you're doing on the face. Um, but that right there is really how you use the, the healing brush tool. I, that's really all it is. Uh, you don't really need to do much else. It's a pretty easy tool to use. Uh, the only other thing you have really have to play with is the hardness and then really get a feel for how to sample and then brush over. Uh, it will give you some funky results from time to time, but uh, just undo it and just sample somewhere else and just brush over, zoom out a little bit and see if the results uh, make sense and something that uh, blends in relatively nicely with, with the area that you're fixing. But uh, that right there, my friends, is is how you do the, uh, the, the uh, this, just the, the heal, just really just this, this basic tool right here, you know, in this palette, just healing brush, you know, nothing special, nothing special about it. Um, there's just some other tools in here that we'll cover in a future video, but that's how you guys do it, man. Um, so I hope that was beneficial. I hope that helps you guys out. It helps give you some clarity and a little bit more insight on how to use this tool to best tackle it to get the results that you guys want when it comes to beautifying this face. You know what I'm saying? Um, as with all videos, my friends, uh, you know, definitely, absolutely hit that sub button down below, man. Um, that sub button, that super fat sub button, man. Hit that subscribe button, man. What are you waiting for? Just subscribe, hit that button, man. Come on, brother, hit that button, man. And then while you're down there, you know, just kind of mouse over a little bit on this side. Oh, up, sorry, this side right here, this side right here. And then just hit the like button too, man, come on. Come on, man. And, but, you know, it's all good, man. Hey, just leave us a comment if you guys have any specific techniques or specific questions that you have. Uh, we respond and we'll, we'll, we look at every single comment and email that we do get. Um, if you have any recommendations, you have any feedback, let us know. You know, shoot us a comment, shoot us an email, um, message us in, in whatever platform that you have and access to and available, and we'll get back to you, man. Uh, we are here absolutely for you guys. So until my, next time, my friends, peace out.